All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Madison Garrett. I will be um, talking about Chapter 6 and 7 in the Weight of Shadows. I'm so sorry if there's background noise going on. I tried really hard to record this on my phone and at home, and nothing is working for me, so I'm here at work um, recording this. Again, I apologize for that if I cause the background noise. Um, anyway, so um, I just want to talk about my overall ideas um, that I've taken away from the book so far. I think that Jose... Um, really focuses on race, class, stereotyping, um, in a sense, our corrupt system for getting citizens or for uh, um, for allowing new citizens and documenting everyone and everything. And, and I think he's right. Um, that's my opinion, though. <laughs> um, he's basically saying the meaning of what it is to be American and saying, like, you know, in order to be American, you have to be more American than Americans, and that's not right. Um, so my main points I'm going to hopefully be touching on as I go throughout the summary of chapters 6 and 7 is, is going to be that corruption that we see throughout those two chapters, um, self-sabotage, and then the mention of a good one and how that plays an important part in the way that Jose thinks. Um, so moving on to chapter 6, um, it's called a good moral one, I believe. So, um, good moral character is what it's called. And I think uh, this is a really important chapter to us understanding Jose more so than we already do now. And each chapter kind of does that, but this one I feel like really gives us an idea of his character and how he feels about himself, the pity that he has a little bit in the self sabotage he goes through. Um, because he doesn't feel like he's worthy. And, um, so this is where the good one is going to come in a little bit about stereotyping and the corrupt government. So, I mean, at the very beginning, the chapter starts with how the government treated him growing up, how he was stereotyped, how he was profiled by law enforcement. Um, and so, uh, and, and he couldn't do things that other teenagers were doing as he was growing up in fear of being the cause that him and his family get deported. Um so, you know, he always had to be, to have to be in line. And that was, I mean, that's hard on anyone. Imagine being a kid or being a teenager or anything and just not being able to do what everyone else is doing because of what's going on in your life. Um, and I understand there's a legal process that you have to go through, and I'm not against that by any means. I just, um, I think it's a lot harder than it has to be. Um, and then, you know, he mentions good one good moral one, good man. I mean, we hear it a lot. And it's always in quotes because I think he thinks of it as a negative term. The reason he thinks of it as a negative term is because his whole life, people have been telling him that he has to be better than those around him. And that's not fair. Um, people told him to be a good man. And so, of course, he's going to take it negatively. He's like, well, what makes me not good already, you know? Um, and I think, in a sense, he also pities himself and that's what causes the self-sabotage and almost not getting to the ceremony and becoming a citizen, which is a big part of his life or a big event that happens in his life. And, you know, um, I think the fact that he knew he couldn't go out of the country um, before his ceremony, but chose to do it anyway, self-sabotage. Uh, the fact that he knew he was going to make it a close call, but how close he would be back in relations to the ceremony, self-sabotage. Even in Chapter 7, there's a little bit of self-sabotage. Um, I just think it's because he feels like he's worthy. And throughout the chapter, when he's in the Philippines, he even uh, gives readers examples as to why he's a good man. Um, you know, when he's at the bar, um, in relation to the kids he encounters, just all of that stuff. And I just think that they're... Um, and we even see a little bit of stereotyping and race there in the perspective of Jose, which is kind of interesting. Um, and that could be the way that he found easier, easiest to describe things to us, maybe as readers. Um, so that's for chapter six. Uh, for chapter seven, the ceremony, um, you know, we see, oh, sorry, actually, let me skip back. Um, I do think there's an important quote that everyone should just kind of top of their mind. Um, on page 89 in chapter 6, it is, I'd immediately played the game of demonstrating that I was, in fact, one of the good ones, using a higher register in which to speak, and mentioning where I went to school. Um, so I think that's really important because, you know, he then proved that he was, he was worthy and everything, but 
he wasn't happy about it, you know, um, and that plays a part in the rest of his decisions from here to the ceremony. So anyway, moving on to chapter seven, the ceremony, um, I definitely think that it was slow because he wanted it to be slow because he wasn't actually excited about it. Um, I think he was bummed that his mom and dad didn't go, even though he said it's not a big deal. And I think it was a big deal. Although he felt that it shouldn't have been a big deal because he felt like he'd always been home and the U.S. was his home because it was. And so when, you know, he, where the self-sabotaging comes in in this one is um, when he, um, sorry, I lost my thought again. When he gets into town, realizes his ceremony is like a day away, he travels, he'd just been traveling all day and night. And then he drove to his friend's house to stay up all night and drink with her and then wake up and be like oh today's the day mm. but then again he leaves an hour early because he feels something's going to go wrong and he doesn't want to miss it so it's kind of confusing how he honestly feels about it but all in all i don't think he's excited but he wants to be he can't be because he doesn't feel fully supported by the government or maybe not by his family honestly that part's a little a little confusing to me but i understand it sense sorry um you know and then when it comes to the ceremony the people who work for the government treat it like oh you did it the right way and oh you know they, they don't treat him with respect in my opinion and that's not very true treat all humans with respect whether they're american Russian, uh, mexican whatever the case may be um they they don't treat him quite yet. They still treat him like an outsider, even though he's like, literally lived here my whole life. Um, and so when the ceremony finally goes through, it's USA, USA, he gets his passport, all that other stuff. I mean, he's still just not excited. He's just like, all these people are crying and joyful around him. And he's like, another day. Um, so, you know, in conclusion, um, it's unfortunate that, and I think he does. Ameri that anyone who's not American has to try twice as hard to be American. And while they're trying all of this, they're experiencing stereotyping, racism, classism, I mean, all of those things, which makes their life that much harder. And it's, it's just not right. It's not right. It's not the right system. Everything takes longer because they're like, oh, we'll get there when we get there. But, you know, I just don't think that that's fair. Mm, I guess we don't have a fair world or a fair life or a fair government. But um, so I, I do think that he does a great job throughout the entire book, sharing his feelings and experiences with his readers and relating them to his main points and what he wants people to take away from the book. And I think that's all I've got. Um, thank you for listening, and I hope you all have a great semester.